So the, here's another point. So this is again, these are a little bit mind twisting in some ways, but but yeah. the 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 um um okay, another thing that's sort of we know from computation is this idea of computation universality. The fact that given that we have a program that runs on one kind of computer, we can as well, you know, we can convert it to run on any other kind of computer. We can emulate one kind of computer with another. So that might lead you to say, well, you think you have the rule for the universe, but you might as well be running it on a Turing machine because we know we can emulate any computational rule on any kind of machine. And that's essentially the same thing that's being said here. That is that what we're doing is we're saying um, these different interpretations of physics correspond to essentially running physics on different underlying, you know, thinking about the physics as running in different with different underlying rules as if different underlying computers were running them. And but that because of computation universality, or more accurately, because of this principle of computational equivalence thing of mine, there's that there, they are um these things are ultimately equivalent. So the only thing that is the ultimate fact about the universe, the ultimate fact that doesn't depend on any of these, you know, we don't have to talk about specific rules, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The ultimate fact is the universe is computational and it is the the things that happen in the universe are the kinds of computations that the principle of computational equivalence says should happen. Now, that might sound like a, you're not really saying anything there, but you are because you can you could in principle have a hypercomputer that things that take an ordinary computer an infinite time to do the hypercomputer can just say oh i know the answer mm -hmm. it's this immediately what this is saying is the universe is not a hypercomputer it's not simpler than a an ordinary turing machine type computer it's exactly like an ordinary turing machine type computer and so that's the that's in the end the sort of net net conclusion is that's the thing that is the sort of the hard immovable fact about the universe. That's sort of the, the fundamental principle of the universe is that it is computational and not hypercomputational and not sort of infracomputational. It is this level of computational ability. And it's um and it kind of has and that's sort of the 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 core fact. But now you know, this this idea that you can have these different kind of uh, rulial reference frames, these different description languages for the universe, it, it makes me, you know, I, I used to think, okay, you know, imagine the aliens, imagine the extraterrestrial intelligence thing, you know, at least they experience the same physics. Right. And now I've realized it isn't true. They, they could have a different rulial frame. That's, yeah, that's that, fascinating. That they can end up with a... a a, a description of the universe that is utterly, utterly incoherent with ours. Yeah. And, and that's also interesting in terms of how we think about, well, intelligence, the nature of intelligence and so on. You know, I'm, I'm fond of the quote, you know, the weather has a mind of its own <laughs> because these are, you know, these are sort of computationally, that, that system is computationally equivalent to the system that is our brains and so on. And what's different is we don't have a way to understand you know, what the weather is trying to do, so to speak. We have a story about what's happening in our brains. We don't have a sort of connection to what's happening there. So we actually, it's funny, last time we talked, maybe a, over a year ago, uh, we talked about how it was more based on your work with Arrival. Uh, we talked about how would we communicate with alien intelligences. Can you maybe comment on how we might, how the Wolfram Physics Project changed your view, how we might be able to communicate with alien intelligence. Like if they showed up, is it possible that because of our com comprehension of the physics of the world might be completely different, we would okay, just so, not so be able to communicate here's at all? The, here's, the, here's the thing, you know, intelligence is everywhere. The fact, this idea that there's this notion of, oh, there's going to be this amazing extraterrestrial intelligence and it's going to be this unique thing, it's just not true. It's the same thing. You know, I, I think people will realize this at about the time when people decide that artificial intelligences are kind of just natural things that are like human intelligences. They'll realize that, that extraterrestrial intelligences or intelligences associated with physical systems and so on it's all the same kind of thing. It's ultimately it, computation. It's all the same. It's all just computation. And the issue is, can you, are you sort of inside it? Are you, are you thinking about it? Do you have 
sort of a story you're telling yourself about it. And, you know, the weather could have a story it's telling itself about what it's doing. We just, it's utterly incoherent with the stories that we tell ourselves based on how our brains work. I mean, ultimately, it must be a, a question whether we can align. Exactly. Align exactly. with the kind of intelligence. That's, right, right, right. So that's a the systematic question, way of doing it. Right. So the question is in the space of all possible intelligences, what's the, how do you think about the distance between description languages yeah. for one intelligence versus another. And needless to say, I have thought about this. And, uh, um, you know, I, I, don't, I don't have a great answer yet, but, but I think that's a, that's a thing where there will be things that can be said. And there'll be things that where you can sort of start to characterize, you know, what is the translation distance between this, you know, version of the universe or this, you know, kind of set of computational rules and this other one. In fact, Okay, so this is a, uh, you know, there's this idea of algorithmic information theory. There's this question of sort of what is the, uh, when you have some something, what is the sort of shortest description you can make of it, where that description could be saying, run this program to get the thing, mm -hmm. right? So I'm pretty sure that that the um, uh, that there will be a physicalization of the idea of algorithmic information, and that. Okay, this is again a little bit bizarre, but so I mentioned that there's the speed of light, maximum speed of information transmission in physical space. Mm -hmm. There's a maximum speed of information transmission in branchial space, which is a maximum entanglement speed. There's a maximum speed of information transmission in ruleal space, which is, has to do with a maximum speed of translation between different uh, description languages. And again, I'm I'm not fully wrapped my brain around this one. Yeah, that one as, just blows my mind to think about that. But that starts getting closer to the, yeah, the it's kind the, of a the intelligence, right? It, it's a and it's also a physicalization of of algorithmic information. And I think there's probably a connection between. I mean, there's probably a connection between the notion of energy and some of these things, which again, I I you know hadn't seen all this coming. I, I've always been a little bit resistant to the idea of connecting physical energy to things in, in in computation theory, but I think that's probably coming.